2003, Otahu, 16 year old Jordan Adams repeatedly beaten around the head. October 2005, Otara, Ulio Naia, stabbed and beaten. 2006, Otahu, 24 year old Fafatai Lafalua, deliberately run over. September 2006, Otara, 17 year old Ricky Murphy, bludgeoned with a baseball bat. In the last three years, 10 young men have died in Auckland in conflict linked to youth gangs, eight of those in South Auckland. There's a corridor of youth gang activity cutting through South Auckland, starting in Counties Manukau, through Otahuhu, Onehanga, and then into Mount Albert and Mount Roskill. Mount Roskill is on the fringe of Auckland's CBD. There's a large Maori and Polynesian community here, large families, not a lot of money, frequent cases of violence at home. It's a stereotype, but unfortunately an accurate one. Kids like these are ripe for recruitment into any one of a number of local youth gangs. I spent several nights on the streets with two of the largest and most dangerous youth gangs in Auckland. These guys belong to the Crips, the Crips DMS. A catchy we acronym. Don't money sex, you know? Yeah. There's another with the money stealing Crip gang up in here, you know? We're still we're caught up in the, whip, eh? the money stealing Crip gang, number around 50, mostly Tongan, aged between 15 and 25, which makes them a youth gang. You know, like youth gangs is different than gangs, like, you know, Jealousy. Cobras. Black powers, you know, we're different from them. We're youth gangs, you know, we terrorize the streets. In some ways, calling them youth gangs is a misnomer, Pam, because uh, the vast majority of the people that we're finding engaging in this street gang activity are over the age of 18 years. But many of them are 14. I've met them. Yes, yeah, some are, yeah. Yeah. My parents raised me good, but you know, it's the way of life. The way you're brought up, this neighbourhood, we're all friends since a young age. So we're going to grow up together. We're not just mates, we're all like family here. The youth gangs here are heavily influenced by what's happening in the States. Straight Crip and DMS set tripping in my pockets. Take the Crips. Their name comes from an LA gang. City of Crips, not City of Sales. It's not just the names they borrow. Central. The gestures and the language are straight off the LA streets. Two C's, free lockup, free C set, free C door. Back for the Crips. How we do? Two more in my homie. With alcohol on board, the gang mentality gathers momentum. Young males out to prove themselves or to establish status in the gang. This guy claimed he was one of the leaders and mouthed threats at us most of the night. And you gonna get fucked with? That's just the way it is. You get fucked up when you fuck with us. Yeah. We keep a fucking two C set to crib all day. I didn't even understand that. Was that English? Yeah, I'll tell you again. I said we keep it 2C Central Crip all day. Fuck Every around. day. Don't fuck around. Okay. <laughs> I think that um, that got through. Later he kicks the lens of the camera. And then he throws a full can at our cameraman. It's all petty sort of stuff, but if you believe what they told us, there's far more serious crime going on. We do runners, we do egg rolls, we do fucking burglaries, we do everything. Yeah, but we we still we do standovers on dope, we do everything, we still money, you know. When you say you do all those things, I mean, is there any law you wouldn't break? We we'll break the law. Rules are meant to be broken, you know. We do everything, you know. Tell me more. Tell you more. Yeah. Well, you need to come for like a documentary well, for a week. You or the law. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You'll see people <laughs> going getting locked up when, when you're on camera. No, you'll no, see. No, so, are we talking oh, like murder? Murder. No, we we'll murder. We'll, we haven't done murder up. yet. Maybe we'll, we'll, maybe we'll do murder yeah. where it comes down to it. You know? you if someone comes, does something to us we don't like, you know, we retaliate and we retaliate with, you know, anger, you know, anger, shit. Yeah. 
This especially applies to their rival gang, the Bloods. And then they're gonna come up in red to this area and like walk around like if we see a nigga in red and they're like walking like you know think they're bad and all you know fuck we straight run them over bro you know we don't like red around this area red are straight dead in this area there's groups of bloods all over the country these guys are based in Mangere we met them at a charming little spot I asked them why they weren't with some of the other bigger gangs we got a lot of them we got KC's in Mangere we got um Black Power, Mongrel Mob. Do you have any desire to join them? No, not at all. I hate them. You hate them? Yep, I hate Why? This is our gang right here. This is our gang right here, Bloods. Why must there be hate, like with uh, the Crips? Why must there be hate? Because they look at life differently compared to us. <laughs> While I couldn't see much of a difference between them, there's little doubt these youth gangs carry out their threats of violence against one another. Last year the Crips attacked a gang called the JDKs with all manner of weapons, including machetes. When do you party? <laughs> hey, settle, fella. Uh, have you used one of those? We've used it too many times. The JDKs, you know about us. You know, you know, nigga. You know, it's like you don't know. Money, nigga. Uh, you got your hand chopped off, yo. Yeah. Yeah, uh, straight seize the fuck up. Yeah. 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 Tell, yeah. tell me what, what, what are you doing with the machete? We're doing with machetes. We gangbang with machetes. Have you? You want us to go get guns and come No. Have you got, have you, have you got guns? We got guns. We all run with guns. How hard is it to get a gun? How hard is it? Just like that. Okay. There's a lot of bravado happening and the camera was an added incentive. But remember, in the last three years there have been eight deaths in South Auckland connected to the youth gangs. A number of those were a little more than, you could almost call them accidents. When two groups get together, uh, highly intoxicated, end up in a fight and unfortunately, in the heat of the moment, you know, people were killed. Local cop Jason Hewitt believes it's not as bad as the media make out. For a start, he says, the numbers are all wrong. Outrageous figures are being put out there, thousands and thousands of gang members across the streets of South Auckland. I think that's fundamentally incorrect. I think if we look at how many of them are actually involved in uh, serious or even minor criminal activity, that number is, is a lot um, smaller. When the killing started, police tried to gauge the scale of the problem. They counted the street gangs and the number of people in them. People we tried to count were certainly calling themselves a gang name, certainly wearing a gang colour and really mimicking that whole hip-hop gangster rap kind of scene. Bloods, Crips. But that's all it was, it was copycatting and, and mimicking. And when we look back at the people that we incorporated into our first list, many of them haven't come to any form of police attention uh, and probably never will. Jason Hewitt believes the youth gang problem has been overhyped by the media, and he may well be correct. Young men doing crime on our street isn't exactly a new phenomenon. The Yogi Bears are one of the new generation of teenage gangs in Auckland. 25 years ago, when there weren't cell phones or violent video games, these guys were a street gang in South Auckland. Their interests include hanging out on the streets, playing video games, drinking beer, and the burglaries they're keen to talk about. Once we run out of money, we need money. Well, that's the only thing to do. Rob the rich and feed the poor. It just happens. Uh, we do all sorts of crimes from pharmaceuticals, Put it down on standovers. Bees. It just shows that some things don't change. Rebellious young males are always going to travel in a pack. It's just that there are so many of them doing it now with a lot more anger and a lot more firepower. And if you look at the population trends for South Auckland, it's likely to get worse. Projections for 10 to 20 years from now paint a grim picture. The Polynesian and Maori communities where gangs have a strong foothold will be even larger and there'll be more cases of poverty, child abuse and domestic violence, all key ingredients in pushing a boy towards a gang life. After the break, is there a solution to the gang problem? How do you think it would help you in making decisions um, whether or not to join a gang? 